Hey, 42 here. The room is dark, the duvet is wrapped warm around you. You finally put your damn phone down and you wonder, why am I not asleep yet? Sometimes, no matter how much you want to, you simply cannot find the off button. You've tried everything, counting sheep, breathing exercises, listening to whale songs. You've even tried counting whales and listening to sheep songs, but nothing is working. Why does this happen? If Mother Nature decided that we needed to spend a third of the day recharging, then why did she make it so bloody difficult to do it? We all know how frustrating it can be. So let's try to understand what's preventing you from dozing off and how you can help it along a little. First things first, what is the difference between being awake and being asleep? You close your eyes, you lie still, you breathe deeply, you can even try dribbling a little if you like, but something special has to happen for you to make the mysterious switch to the other side. There are five stages of sleep. In the first, you move from an alpha state, basically daydreaming, into a theta state, where your brain locks down your muscles and prepares to move into a deeper sleep. You could say that you are technically asleep in theta, but very likely. It's at this stage where the hypnic jerk can occur, that moment when you suddenly twitch awake as if you're falling. We think it's likely to be caused by your brain still being conscious when sleep paralysis sets in. It could have been an evolutionary benefit so that our old primate ancestors didn't fall out of the tree when they had a little nap on a branch. But still, given that, in the US alone, 1.8 million people every year visit the emergency room because they fell out of bed. Evolution has quite a long way to go. In stage two, your brain sends out waves called sleep spindles that we think are used as a sort of thought jammer to keep you calm and stop you from thinking about the washing up or that spreadsheet or where you hid the bodies. Stage three is to transition from light sleep into deep sleep. And stage four is where you get a rush of delta waves and you are in your deepest sleep. Stage four lasts about 30 minutes and is the best time to draw on somebody's face. Finally, you get stage five, where REM sleep occurs, and this is when your body repairs itself, jots down memories permanently, and makes you feel rested. But the big question for today is, what kicks off the whole process? What happens to lead you to the theta state in stage one, where it all begins? So, there are two main factors that control sleepiness. One is sleep pressure, something that increases the longer that you've been awake for, and is created by the release of adenosine. The levels of adenosine rise whilst you're awake, and then you break it down whilst you sleep. The next factor is the light. We may now have 24-hour supermarkets and Skype calls at 3am, but we're not designed for this. We're supposed to get up at sunrise and sleep at sunset, just like the Teletubbies. This is done through melatonin, which is released when it's dark helping you to feel sleepy. As the sun rises, your body releases cortisol, which gets you up and ready for another day in your repetitive and pointless existence. Okay, so that all sounds very well, but what happens to interrupt this complicated process? One day you're snoring like a pig in a blanket and then BAM, you're up at 4am watching YouTube for the fifth night in a row. And although this video is both entertaining and educational, you're welcome by the way, You'd probably rather be dreaming of a chocolate dinosaur and riding a Tyrannosaurus Twix and not waking up feeling like you've been in a cage fight. Stress is probably the main cause of why can't I effing sleep, because stress just throws all your systems out of whack. Hormone levels go all over the place, heart rhythms change, it's a mess. So you need to manage this through tackling the cause of your stress. Not saying that's easy, but there's plenty of professional support out there. Sorry, I can't help you on that front. Then there's drugs, both illegal and legal. Caffeine, for example, works by attaching to the adenosine receptors and speeding up nerve cell activity where adenosine would typically slow it down. So no tea before bedtime, unless it's one of those herbal monstrosities. If you want to call some salad in hot water tea, that's your prerogative. I'll be over here with my comforting beige brew. When insomnia strikes, some people turn to alcohol or marijuana, but neither is really a great option. Both can help you to get to the early sleep stages fairly quickly, but they reduce the amount of time in stage 5, REM sleep, 
so you won't wake up feeling refreshed and your room will smell of Foster's and Domino's pizza. When it comes to melatonin, the biggest enemy is your phone screen. It's thought that the biggest obstacle to most people falling asleep quickly today is technology. The light from a smartphone or laptop screen is enough to trick your brain into thinking it's still daylight, so you won't produce the necessary melatonin. It can increase the time it takes you to fall asleep by over an hour. It's important to give yourself a good 30 minutes before bed with no screens. You should try that new app where people take all of the subtitles from famous movies and print them out on real sheets of paper, except more articulately written. There's a lot of misinformation out there about sleep, partly because there is so much we don't understand. So let's try to tackle a few of the more common myths. Firstly, the obvious one, counting sheep. It's thought that this whole concept is derived from actual shepherds. They would worry about their flocks going missing at night, so to make sure all was well, they would go out and count up the little land clouds. For you and I though, with our worries being decidedly non-ovine, counting sheep is completely useless. It actually stimulates the active parts of your brain. You're much better off picturing a relaxing scene like a beach or a waterfall. And sure, that can include sheep if you like. Just make sure nobody else is in attendance, please. Exercise is very important to keep you healthy and a good active day will help you to nod off quicker. But if you're restless, doing some sit-ups is only going to make things worse, since it will increase the adrenaline and, more importantly, raise your core temperature. Heat equilibrium is important for sleep, and you should be aiming to keep your extremities warm with socks, etc., but your core cool, which is easy if you have a frosty heart. And finally, we're often told that you can train yourself to need less sleep. Well, you can't. You can learn to put up with it and maybe control your mood a bit better, but the fact is, we each have a typical sleep requirement which differs from person to person, often 7 to 8 hours, and with any less than that, we won't be running at our optimum. Concentration will drop significantly, your temper will be shorter, and you'll find Janice in Human Resources that extra bit annoying. Sure, she's irritating on a good day, but without a good sleep, she's like listening to Paris Hilton reading Fifty Shades of Grey over a severely bad Skype connection. But no matter how much sleep you manage to get each night, the best way to wake up feeling refreshed is to avoid waking up during deep sleep. Doing so will make you feel groggy and sleepy for hours afterwards. Wake up during light sleep and you'll feel awake and refreshed. But it's not just down to luck, you can actually plan to wake up during light sleep every morning. It takes your brain 90 minutes to go through one full sleep cycle. So, try to always set your alarm in 90 minute intervals, giving you the best chance of waking up during a light sleep phase. So, you could set your alarm for 6 hours after you go to bed, or 7.5 hours, or 9 hours. All are divisible by 90 minutes. Just make sure you factor in the average of 14 minutes it takes for a person to fall asleep. So, I hope this has helped some of you insomniacs out there. Although, I'm not sure it was too smart of me to tell my entire audience to stop staring at screens. No staring after midnight then. Deal? And for those of you who do sleep like a baby, I hope you have someone to change you in the middle of the night. Because you really should have grown out of that by now. Thanks for the view. Subscribe for more. 42.